Hi, folks. This is Adrian Znutrik, CA with eChart and Market Ignition Crypto Burp, talking to you on this beautiful Friday webinar session, market review, if you will. Let's not waste time. Without further ado, let's jump in right into the market update. So starting off with magical barrier of 5,000 points for S&P 500 being broken. The new all-time highs are being printed. The trend is continuing. It's rallying higher and fatter and faster. This is to be seen by the accelerating slope of 200-day moving average, as well as even more vertical 50-day trend and the 20-day trend that following that is following and providing a little bit of a backup support to the local swing lows. As we climb higher, the, there is not a single person that could refute to deny the actual uplifting trend of higher highs and higher lows of S&P 500. And this persisting higher, new highs, new all-time highs, well, it doesn't happen too often. Just a quick view on the dollar side, right? Being being taken a look here at the UUP, the ticker is UUP, which is a US dollar ETF, the big dollar bullish fund, if you will. Now, it's actually it's actually hovering right above the 200, uh, 200 day moving average at the bottom of the red, red curve, the 50 day trend and the 20 day trend, all are moving up. The trend on dollar is bullish, right? We've seen for the lens of the UUP, the dollar bullish fund, if you will, or the dollar index itself, right? Uh, being at 104 points, just a little bit above, with a 20-day moving average crossing above the 200-day moving average, which is floating, right? The 200-day trend is kind of like floating. It's not bullish or bearish. It's neutral. It's oscillating sideways. It's like a you know, horizontal movement that is telling us that the market is kind of like predominantly kind of like mainly occupied and busy chopping around this main average. Still, you know, the trends are locally moving up, even though the 200-day trend is slightly curving up. It's not truly dominantly bullish positive. The 20 day trend is crossing over. It's curving up for the 50 day trend. So there is a chance dollar may actually see some spark, especially that the UP, which is often, like I said, a proxy is hovering closer to the highs seen in October last year, October, November last year, which was a little bit of a blow off top, a little bit, a little bit of a, just a little bit of an overthrow on top, on top right? Um, for the dollar. The respective, the respective same kind of like situation up here is about 707 points. And the dollar right now at 104 points, you know, is uh, it's a little bit less when compared with the UEP, right? So just maybe, it may be showing, just giving you a glimpse into the future. Who knows? We'll see. However, that bullish crossover is not bearish. Well, how is that translating to Bitcoin, right? Well, Bitcoin is pressing like crazy. 47,500, 47,500 is pushed crazy off the lows, almost $10,000 of the 3,500 low swing low on a false breakout, right? So we got a false breakout early in January on top of the ETF listings. And another false breakout below. This is something, if you remember, I talked about some couple of weeks ago, that uh, there might be a possibility for those false breakouts, false breakout on top of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if this actual false breakout you know, happens when the market just jumps around, uh, chops around, you know, sweeps the lows, if you will, and just comes back, you know, to the bro above the broken support. The Bitcoin is murdering for the shorts right now. And uh, some time ago, I gave a comment about Bitcoin being at 42,500, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the typical market open price is the 42,500. You know, for February 1st, and the seasonal pattern for the February 1st until, uh, until April 15th returns 23%, almost 24%, more than 23% on average, right? 23% added on top of 42,500 places us into $52,000 region. So even though there is no 100% no kind of guarantees, there is no way to predict the future, it's still okay to have the benchmark for expectations and the benchmark maintain and retain over the long term. It tells you that the average expected return can be around 23% between February 1st and April 15th, historically, right? The momentum is ramping up. The 50-day trend is kind of like stalling a little bit. It's not too bullish. However, the other side, the momentum locally is just going crazy. Um, just boosting over 72 points. The 50-day volatility is curving down just a little bit, which is which is interesting, right? There's been the slowdown effect. However, the volatility is also still elevated in an overall very big upward uplifting tide. Right now at 400, uh, 430, or oh, sorry, 1430, um, with a with a st with a stalling just a little bit curving down the 50-day volatility trend. The volatility rising. It kind of like amplifies the effect of the trend itself, right? So 
the more the volatility rises, the more the stronger the trend becomes. Here's another angle just to take a look uh, at the 200-day BPRO, BPRO moving average per beginner pro uh, trend line, if you will, giving us to more trend sensitive, uh, more recently biased kind of like an approach with $40,000. This is the main local support. So if things go wrong, this is where you can anticipate that, uh, that the buy wall was just gonna be put eventually because we tend to rely on those averages. We tend to unquarter those numbers, to unquarter those trends. And this trends represents this, let's call it quote unquote, fair price of Bitcoin, according to the 200 day long-term BPRO trend that is rising, right? There's not a single question about the trend rising. This is a very strongly dominant, dominating Bitcoin bull market. Not a single piece of doubt about that. Just look at the candles. So my private trend update, trade update, uh, I've, uh, I've been very vocal and public about kind of like entering into Bitcoin here where it's kind of like highlighted 41,800, which is where that bull market, you know, sorry, the bull, bullish breakout signal came up from the CTF trailer, which is my private trading strategy that I use. And uh, it has been moving up, right? Ever since, ever since the actual breakout, we are talking about the rise, the price increase, 41,800, so all the way 13, almost 14%. Now, it's not doing too, too bad. Overall, right? Last time I checked, it was five, five, 520, 30,000 uh, position running right now, open at 460 worth. So uh, it's it's persisting nicely. Trading the stop higher position is in profit, 60%, uh, 60,000 uh, 60, profit at least right now. So it's not it's not too bad. Let's see how it goes. The trends tend to persist. So how does that all connect with altcoins where the momentum principle and the overall Rule of thumb for investing, profitable investing, means that the outperforming assets will continue to outperform and the underperforming assets will continue to underperform. This is so-called momentum principle for momentum investing. So taking a look from the same benchmark, let's say, for this sake, you know, it's a chart I, I took from 2022 in August. So the point of reference being the peak of the bear market rally in August 2022, um, it kind of like gave us this price benchmark, if you will. The price benchmark are in the comparing the Bitcoin price and the actual crypto market capitalization of altcoins. You know this this benchmark reference point of reference for the breakout. Uh, not only Bitcoin was far earlier, right, half a year earlier or more ahead of altcoins for, to, to to present such a breakout. It also provided with so much more aggression, almost hundred percent, rallied almost hundred percent from the break level, while correspondingly. Altcoins rallied almost 20%, right? So 20% versus 100%. Bitcoin is outperforming altcoins by a lot. This is where the trend strength is. This is where the momentum is. This is where the investors are parking their money, not altcoins right now. The altcoins are lagging. And if they're lagging, they're more likely to continue to lag, which means that this is less money to be made with altcoins on average overall, right? Uh, I'm not mentioning any outliers or any crazy gems and pumps and so on, because that's that's unpredictable. However, on average, you would have done so much more and so much better by parking your money in Bitcoin over the last year and a half, if you will, than parking your money in altcoins. Altcoins from the point of from the moment of the breakout, from the point of the reference from the benchmark is 20% up. Bitcoin is almost 100% up. The numbers speak for themselves. Ethereum is chopping around following this positive, gigantic breakout, several multi-week breakout you know, that happened well, over the pattern of ascending triangle stretching between 2140 and 880 at the bottom. You know, this ascending triangle puts us in the target, expected target for this breakout at 3400s, right? What it tells us is even though there is no future, we tend to anchor to those numbers. We tend to under and see, see the same things that the other people see because we read the same books and it's okay. This also kind of like places magically, this magical belief, this magical thinking that this part pattern is going to virtualize and virtualize somehow itself, which is why we would set these expectations there. And because many people believe it's true, it actually may come true and fulfill right itself. This is maybe a self-fulfilling prophecy. Overall, 2,500 right now, uh, down from over 2,700, which is not too bad. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is definitely outperforming and pushing strongly you know, uh, far more strongly than Ethereum. Still, Ethereum is something, maybe a little bit of a sleeping giant right now. It's moving up, it's moving up earlier, you know, than Bitcoin. However, it's not moving as strongly as Bitcoin. And the chain link, chain link has been spectacular overall lately, right? This very strong positive 200 day trend is again moving rampantly up 
it's ramping up very aggressively. The breakout target for this local channel that actually was presented with a little bit of whipsaws on top and the bottom, right? With a little bit of the uncertainty and kind of like local seven turnarounds. Now, overall, the range trading range pattern kind of like was stretched between 12.8 and 16.6, .6, right? That brings us into the uh, more conservative target of about, of about $20.4 for, uh, for coin or if we take it into conclusion, there's those very, very swing high and a very swing low. You know, this puts us into far more aggressive 23.2 per uh, 23.2 uh, dollars, 20 dollars, 23 dollars and 20 cents for uh, for this more aggressive breakout target for chain link, right? So this is something again. I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. I'm wrong 50 times a day. Just maybe it's fair to expect some a little bit of a resistance because even though there's there is no 100% guarantee of what's going to happen. Maybe it's going to smash and just slide through and slice it through and just rally like there's no tomorrow. Who knows? However, more often than not, when there is expected pattern uh, expiration, the pattern target, and it's come to virtualize and materialize, like I said, we tend to put uh, the ask orders around them, right? We tend to kind of like assume the market will turn. And because many people will do that, they will withdraw their buy signals, they will withdraw their buying orders. They were focused on selling around that area, which actually creates this opposing force, the supply pressure, which may in turn slow down the local trend and actually make it turn around, right? So be careful around this area. 20.4, 23.2 is something to eye for a potential local, uh, for a potential local slowdown. Uh, at least the first reaction uh, would be a slowdown, right? Who knows what the next one? The next one should be probably to the opposite because the trends tend to persist. The trends are upwards. There is a massive massive accumulation yearly accumulation pattern that was broken easily right this was just a reaccumulation so it seems we're just kicking off into the uh hope or optimism stage right we're away from the, any sort of like disbelief there are no people who disbelieve that anymore they like chain link is actually the link is, is is holding strong around the targets it's not there yet however expect just a little bit of a slowdown in that area otherwise the trends tend to persist Last week, I gave you the update about AVAX as well, right? And see what's happening right now. It's compressing itself into this kind of like narrowing wedging pattern, if you will, right? And the wedging pattern doesn't even have to look like this per se, right? It doesn't really have this kind of like a typical wedgy, uh, wedgy triangular, triangular kind of like a price action setup. However, the trend and the resistance that is trailed resistance on top defined by the CTF trailer, by the high top for trailer, by the trailer indicator from the Berbigator Pro, that is my private strategy again, and the 200 day trend line, right? This is kind of like what's compressing. The trend line is con uh, consequently pressing higher, providing a little bit of a support, and the resistance is compressing to the downside, right? So you got this kind of like a squeeze effect. The squeeze effect where the price just gets squeezed and just maybe prepares for a massive breakout. Speaking of which, we're just looking at the attempt of a breakout at 37. 0.8, which is the main resistance. If we close above 38, it may trigger the bull signal. And uh, the last bull signal that came up, it gave us this rally. Who knows where it goes next? That is a little bit of a trend slowdown. However, the trend is up and positive. I would not trade against that. And last but not least, Solana, right? We just had an interesting discussion about Solana yesterday on Spaces with Altcoin Daily. Shout out to them, great people. Uh, very strong trend. And even though Solana Network was down for several hours, it actually inspired a lot of traders to buy more, it seems, right? The positive reaction is there. Uh, Solana is breaking out. It's attempting a breakout similar to AVAX, right? It's a very similar structure. Strong upward trend, lifting very fast and lifting very aggressively. It's 12x from the bottom, from the bottom of the market until now, of the cycle bottom until now. It's actually grown by 12x or more incredible strength right this is definitely one of the best performers and it's actually attempting to have a breakout after several months of silence and a slowdown right it's looking a little bit better more bullish than avax uh however like i said the daily breakout confirmation is needed if we manage to close above 100 point, 105 points 106 points uh up there 106 dollars per coin just maybe it's going to be enough to facilitate this bullish trigger signal and provide enough of a volatility driven breakout uh, that is empowered. It's going to empower and self fulfill itself, pushing the prices higher. If that happens, trend is strong and aggressive to the upside. There's a lot of capital coming into the crypto and trends tend to persist. So, very strong trends like this one, well, they tend to rally far longer and far more. 
uh, and tend to provide proof more rational than anyone can remain solvent. And shout out to our partners at NordVPN, who are actually also sponsors for this very video. I've been using that tool for privacy, for security, for um, even watching some streams, for watching some unavailable in my country series on Netflix, if you will. This is something that I've been doing as well for years. I've been using that product for years without hesitation. And, uh, and now we are partnered up together, right? So perhaps you might want to give it a chance. And there is a special money back guarantee program. There's a four month extra and a very cheap subscription. You're gonna find the link in the video description. So take a look. I've been Eddie Zunchu, CMT, Toronto Market Ignition, Crypto Burp, your host for today's session. God bless you all. See you around and tune in for the next one. Bye-bye.